Hello and welcome to my second review vlog for Professor Firestone's American Cinema Class. Uh, today I will be doing my review vlog on It's a Wonderful Life, which was produced in 1946 um, during the years following World War II, also known as post-war America. So the reason that I chose this movie is because Christmas time is my favorite time of the year. And I remember watching this movie with my family every night on Christmas Eve. I'm even wearing a uh, Christmas shirt uh, from a Christmas story. Um, but it was directed by a renowned director, Frank Capra, and starred the actors James Stewart, who played George Bailey, and Donna Reed, who played Mary Hatch. So, It's a Wonderful Life was directed by, as I said, Frank Capra, who made a tremendous amount of movies, uh, some of which include Mr. Deeds Goes to Town and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Now, all of his movies tend to have a positive message in them, and a lot of Christmas movies are all about having a powerful message in them as well. Whether it be Mr. Scrooge learning his lesson about what Christmas means, or in this case, in It's a Wonderful Life, the message was, each man's life touches so many other lives. And when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? So what this means is that every person on this earth affects someone else's life. Whether it be for good or bad, everything in life happens for a reason. So just to give a brief overview of the movie, in It's a Wonderful Life, an angel is sent from heaven to help the desperately frustrated businessman, George Bailey, by showing him what life would have been like if he had never existed. So throughout the movie, you kind of start to notice the frustration that George is coming to realization with. But as the movie goes on, he starts to realize that life is not as bad as he thinks and that he can't become frustrated when the life that he's been given is so great. He doesn't know this, but throughout the movie, and with the help of the angel, he does. So now I will tell you a little bit about James Stewart, who is the main actor in the movie. So James Stewart went to Princeton University and studied architecture, but also had an interest in the performing arts. He joined the University Players, which is a performing arts group at the school. And one thing that the director, Frank Capra, does is tie in James Stewart's postgraduate life with the movie. After James Stewart graduated, he took his talents to Broadway in 1932, but eventually work for him began to, be, began to come short as the Great Depression hit. Now, this ties in great with the movie because even though the Great Depression is not occurring at the time that this movie is produced, George Bailey is facing difficulties with his job. So when an actor is acting out something that they have personally experienced, it gives the actor more character and allows them to be themselves and allows them to play the role in a greater and better fashion. Now no, now that I know this, I see how well James Stewart played his role. During the time that this movie was produced, it was only a year after World War II had ended. Men and women are getting back from the war and trying to restart their lives. Some of the obstacles that they faced had to do with recuperating from the war. Now, my great-grandfather served in World War II, and his daughter, my grandma, she told me that when he came back from the war, he didn't want to think about the war, he didn't want to talk about the war, and he even didn't want his own family mentioning the war. So how would men and women adjust to this new life and that everyone is living in in the United States? Movies. Even though that's not really the answer, movies offered a distraction from the hardships that people faced returning from the war. With people coming back from the war, more and more movies were being made, which caused a huge boom in the movie industry. And to this day, families and people everywhere can still watch movies. For example, It's a Wonderful Life. And remember the joy and excitement that it brought to 
that it brought to their families and especially after the the hard times of the war. So the last thing uh, that I'm going to be talking about today is the one of the last things is what made this movie so great, in my opinion. Um, to me, it was the close-up scenes with George and Mary. Now, George and Mary, they're married in this movie, and they are both facing the hardships um, of their marriage. George is facing the hardships and the struggles with his business, and Mary has to deal with the mentality of George and his business and the backlash that comes from it. Now, during these scenes, uh, during the close-up scenes, uh, there would be, they would get emotional and they would get emotional at each other and the camera would focus in on their faces in order to caption the intensity of the scene. So the camera crew, they wouldn't show their faces in the same camera shot, but instead what they did, which is why I love this so much, is they would show their faces separately in a single shot. So it lets you see the reactions that each of them are getting from each other. Um, this way, it, it gave you a better essence of the scene and allowed it to be a better movie. So I want to say thank you guys for watching my second review vlog. And I hope that you guys check out my next one in two weeks, uh, which will be on Blazing Saddles, which was directed by Mel Gibson. Thank you.